Hi, I'm Herbert van der Sompel. I prepared this presentation for the FORCE 2015 conference. I will talk about an idea that I've been tossing around with for some time. I have come to refer to it as signposting the scholarly web. Like most of what I do, this idea is related to infrastructure for scholarly communication, and it is aimed at devising a scholarly web that is more friendly to machines. I believe that better applications for both humans and machines can result from that. The essence of the idea is to add a thin layer of interoperability across the scholarly web. A layer that is intended to reveal in a coarse manner what is what. The approach I'm thinking of consists of introducing typed links to connect scholarly resources. That's why I started calling it signposting the scholarly web. Now you're probably already giving me a thumbs down because there exist many solid interoperability efforts that use typed links. That's true and have been closely involved in several. The thing is that these efforts all solve a very specific problem in a detailed way. They provide enormous levels of expressiveness, but they use a technology stack, RDF and related, that has significant barrier to entry. That's actually illustrated by their slow adoption. Anyhow, this signposting idea is not at all about replacing those efforts. Rather, it's about achieving some level of system-wide interoperability using a technology stack that's way more accessible, HTTP that is. The level of expressiveness is incomparable to that of these RDF solutions, but the return on investment might nevertheless be significant. Technically, the idea is based on a principle related to REST architecture. It's called hypermedia as the engine of application state. No time to explain, please look it up. The ingredients of the solution are typed links added in responses to HTTP requests, registered relation types, and media types. I will explain by means of a pattern that is very common in web-based scholarly communication. Here's a DOI identified asset. It has two authors identified by their ORCID, and the asset consists of three resources, a PDF, an HTML document, and an image. And for good measure, let's add that landing page to the mix. Currently, there are roads that connect these resources. Those roads are implemented using HTTP and using HTML links. The DOI redirects to the landing page. The landing page has links to the PDF, the HTML, the image. But the landing page also has links to other stuff on the web, stuff that is not part of the asset. Oh, and then there are also roads from the profile pages of these authors to the DOI. The overall point is, that while roads exist, there are no signposts on the roads to indicate where they lead. A human can navigate those roads intuitively, a machine does not have that capability. So let's introduce signposts. I will use only relation types that are registered by IANA. First, let's clarify the relation between the DUI and the landing page. We're going to indicate that the thing identified by the DUI is described by the landing page. For the geeks, this is what the response to an HTTP GET on the DUI looks like. You see the link header with the relation in red. Next, let's add the inverse relation. The landing page describes the asset identified by the DUI. Oh, and then there's this thing where we don't want the URI of the landing page to be used for referencing. There's a relation type for that. It's called canonical. Now, let's solve that issue with some links leading to resources that are part of the asset and others are not. We model the landing page as being a collection and we include type links that point at items of the collection. We don't do that for resources A and B that are not part. And we end the inverse relation types, HTML, PDF, image. They say they belong to the collection. A and B obviously don't. Hey, if a machine now happens on, say, the HTML page, it can follow the collection link and then the canonical link to understand that this HTML page resorts under a DOI. That's very important, actually. For example, to be able to collect all annotations made to a DOI-identified asset. Let's wrap it up by adding author relations from the DOI to the ORCID. I hope you catch my drift. This is just one pattern. 
Many others can be tackled using existing IANA relation types. New relation types could be defined. We could specify a profile of relation types to glue scholarly resources together. Let me know if you're interested.